Hi there. My name is Troy Parfit, and I'm the author of The Devil and His Due, How Jordan Peterson Plagiarizes Adolf Hitler. In today's episode, Am I Lying About Jordan Peterson? I'm going to talk about how people have responded to my claim that Jordan Peterson is plagiarizing Adolf Hitler. I've received quite a lot of feedback about my claim, and of course, views have varied. They have ranged between fascinating, when does the book come out, and how dare you, you're a pathetic liar. However, responses have been overwhelmingly on the you're a pathetic liar side of the ledger, which is to say they've been extremely negative. People tend to respond with anger and mockery, and Jordan Peterson's fans have sent me hate mail. It's the negative or even vitriolic responses that I wish to address today. Among people who respond with contempt, there's a pattern. Almost without fail, they avoid talking about the evidence. For example, they never say, how many examples of plagiarism do you have? Or they almost never ask to see the examples. No one has inquired about which Hitler sources Peterson allegedly takes from, for example, Mein Kampf, Second Book, Table Talk, or his speeches. Nobody has asked about the process of discovery, and they're absolutely certain that Peterson couldn't be plagiarizing. And I'm talking about Peterson fans and non-Peterson fans, including Peterson's critics. Here we see some disturbing themes. One is arrogance. I know I'm right because I know I'm right, and I know you're wrong because I know you're wrong. Another theme is anti-scientific thinking. In order to validate or invalidate a plagiarism claim, we need to examine evidence, but not in this case. We don't even need to ask about or mention evidence. Adding to the embittered dismissals and evidence avoidance, there's been a lot of speculation about motive. Again, no one has asked me about my motives because that would indicate curiosity, and indicating curiosity would contravene having absolute certainty. Once more, they just know because they just know. Peterson is not plagiarizing Hitler. End of discussion. So here are the two motives which supposedly caused me to lie about Jordan Peterson plagiarizing Adolf Hitler. One, I'm jealous of Peterson's intelligence and success. Two, I'm only trying to make money. These rebuttals are pretty flimsy. As for Peterson's intelligence, I genuinely believe that he is a plagiarist. Therefore, I couldn't believe he is intelligent. And I never believed he was intelligent before I discovered he was plagiarizing. My first impression of Jordan Peterson was that he had the personality of a dictator. My second realization was that he habitually lied. Claims he made about 20th century history and the social sciences were often just patently untrue. As for concocting a lie to make money, my accusers have revealed that they are not writers. These days, making money from book writing is almost impossible. Most writers write for other reasons. Also, most people don't read. Books now have to compete with Netflix and YouTube and so on. Generally speaking, you don't write a book thinking you're going to make a lot of money. More importantly, how could I be A, lying, and B, hoping to make money? If I were really lying about Peterson plagiarizing Hitler, people would quickly figure this out. The book would be virtually dead on arrival. I mean, really, if the book's central claim were bogus, how many books could I expect to sell before word got round? A hundred? Five hundred? Probably no more than a thousand. And that wouldn't be worth it. The amount of time I've spent researching, collecting evidence, and writing has been about three years. I've read more than 20 books. I've watched countless documentaries on Hitler and the Third Reich, and more than 1,000 hours of Peterson's interviews, speeches, and lectures. I've stayed up until 4 a.m. assembling a list of plagiarized statements, and have unearthed and annotated dozens of instances of Peterson praising, defending, sympathizing with, identifying with, and downplaying the malevolence of Hitler and other Nazis. I've crafted and recrafted paragraphs to get them just so. I'm into my eighth round of edits. All of this for a couple of thousand dollars? It's not worth the pain. Also, why would I lie? It would ruin my reputation. In addition to never being able to write another book, I would be forever known as that guy who lied about Jordan Peterson plagiarizing Adolf Hitler. I would be branded a crank and ostracized, not only by strangers, but family and friends. Moreover, think of the legal implications. The truth is, the people who dismiss my claims because of my supposed dishonesty while professing a telepathic understanding of my motivations don't know the first thing about me. I would never lie about something like this, and the accusation that I am lying is childish and groundless. To know if I were lying, we would have to examine the evidence, which still hasn't been released. But then Jordan Peterson's fans have been claiming my book is badly written. How would they know? We haven't reached the date of publication. I'd like to close with a story. When Jordan Peterson spoke in Oslo, Norway in 2018, he relayed a joke about a dog who was trained to give the Zig Heil upon hearing gas the Jews. When he spun this little yarn, he gave several partial Nazi salutes. Isn't that funny? Remember, one of his main claims is to be warning of fascism. So why on earth would he make such a so-called joke? 
In the same talk, he defended a neo-Nazi and Holocaust denier named Ernst Sundel, 1939-2017, claiming that the Canadian government drafted hate speech legislation as a result of Zundel's quote-unquote shenanigans, which isn't true. But even if it were, why would Peterson claim to be warning against the conditions that facilitated the Holocaust while opposing hate speech laws? Canada produced hate speech laws not to deal with Ernst Zundel, who was a Nazi organizer and German citizen, but his crony, James Keegstra, 1934-2014, to from Eckville, Alberta, not to be confused with Fairview, Alberta, Jordan Peterson's hometown. Alberta has quite a history of neo-Nazism. Take, for instance, William Bible Bill Eberhardt, 1878-1943. to Of German heritage, Eberhardt was a teacher, evangelist, provincial premier, like a governor, provincial minister of education, eugenicist, and Nazi crackpot. Eberhardt was also something of a cult figure, and he recruited his cult followers from the working class, some of whom believed he was the son of God. William Eberhardt was the leader of Alberta's Social Credit Party, a fascist organization. Years later, the acting leader of Alberta's Social Credit Party was James Keegstra. Ernst Sundel supported James Keegstra in a bid to become the elected leader of that party, but the endeavor failed. By day, James Keegstra was a high school teacher who taught anti-Semitism in his social studies classes in Alberta, Canada for 10 years. Keegstra told his students that the Jews were sadistic child killers who had created the Holocaust to gain sympathy. He threw in that they were in control of communism in a plot to destroy the Christian way of life. Students who disagreed were marked down. When a concerned mother finally realized what Keegstra was doing, she read her son's homework assignment and got a shock. She spoke out and wait for it, was swiftly reproached by the community who vilified her as a liar. Nevertheless, her complaint drew the attention of the media and the police, and James Keekster was convicted of the willful promotion of hate speech, as was Ernst Sundel after the Canadian government deported him to Germany. The Keekster ruling was historic because it upheld the constitutionality of Canada's hate speech laws. Remember, Peterson said these laws were drawn up for Sundel, but they were really drawn up for Keekster, a fellow Albertan. The claim made by the whistleblowing mother turned out to be true. It was supported by that thing called evidence. Thank you for listening, and don't forget to hit like and subscribe.